Okay. Jason Verbeely sent me this a long time ago. And every time I look at this cap bank, I'm like, you know what? I need to do that experiment. Unfortunately, I haven't had the time. And it's kind of dangerous. And uh, right now, there's only a few people here today, so I can do this. Normally, I can't because everyone upstairs is going to yell and complain at me. So the objective is to create a magnetic pattern okay I got so much stuff sitting around I don't know where to put my camera let me set my camera here I'll show you what I got so these are blank magnets alright there's some viewing film you can see they're blank magnets if I get a uh, if I get a regular magnet here you can see I've got a field okay now the objective here is to create a magnet similar to this. Okay, CMR magnetics. This is a magnet that repels itself once it gets to a certain point, but it will hold itself in place. And what this actually is is magnetic pixels. Okay, so there are magnetic pixels on this actual magnet. Um, you can see the individual north and south poles. Okay. So my idea was to use the capacitor bank, which is why Jason sent me these a long time ago. And Jason actually gave this CMR magnetic demonstration to me. Thanks, Jason. That's beautiful, brother. Um, at the Global BEM conference. So way before that, he sent me these blanks. Now, what I have here um, is basically, let me show you, one of these print heads. Okay. This is the exact print head that I'm going to be using right now. Um, are very similar anyway. So the, there's a bunch of needles in here, and I got another one over here. You can see there's a bunch of needles in here, and there's a bunch of uh, this one actually is a magnet. It's a little bit different. That that other one's not. You can see that there are individual coils in here. Okay, and those coils actually create these poles, which make these pins move up and down inside this apparatus. So I'm actually going to be using one of these print heads that have individual poles on them. So there's a U-shaped magnet here. Uh, not a magnet, sorry. A U-shaped piece of iron core. It's not magnetized. And uh, basically there will be a pole here and a pole here. There are, I believe, nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I have one of these left out, all right, to make this work right and uh, I've connected them up so I have one of these flipped, 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 flipped and I'm just going to basically be setting this right on top of here probably securing it very well and uh, discharge 10,000 joules worth of energy into this thing see if we can get a field on this magnet so that's the plan see what happens All right, well you can see I've got this big massive contactor and I've wired up and mounted the uh, little device to the surface of the magnet using just some wood and I got everything hooked up, ready to go. Let's see what happens. All right, maximum voltage. I smell it. It worked. It just didn't go bang, which is good. Usually it goes bang. Mmm, oh, yeah. yummy. The piers, the coils, definitely blew out. Just couldn't hear it. Look how much gunk came out of the coils there because they're coated in epoxy. Stinky burnt magnet wire. Let's see what we got. Totally did it. <laughs> it worked. Washed it up.
clearly see the magnetic poles in there. Ha ha ha! Wow! Check it out. It actually held those little imprints. My first pixelated poly magnet, homemade. See the outer one? And the inner one. Let's see if we can detect that with my pole detector. Alright, so right there you can see that I have a field of some kind. Um, the poles are really hard to detect. Um, I did try to do north-south, north-south. Um, it's very difficult to actually find them, so I'm using the, the viewing film to actually like locate them and, and check them again here. So, right uh, there you can see one the flip polarity. Yeah, yeah, watch. There's one. But yes, indeed, it did leave individual little pixels. All right, so it's time for a little ferrofluid test. So what I have is a thin sheet of plastic, and I'm just putting ferrofluid on there. And uh, this is basically what I have. You can see the individual um, poles, and you can see a bunch of lines and stuff everywhere. That that appears to be the other external um, magnetic field that was created within the wires themselves inside that little unit. Um, later I actually took a bigger magnet and like erased those surface imprints and was only left with just those really deep um, pigments of, uh, of polarized material. Alright you can see here I'm actually uh, flipping the magnet over and um, checking the back side and things um, it definitely appears that there's a broader not so perfectly pixelated field on the other side of this magnet I guess to do this properly I'd have to do both sides of the magnet uh, with reverse polarity and really really get it a straight through shot um, but for the first try it seems to be quite nice All right, here's another time lapse of the front and then a time lapse of the back of letting the fluid, the ferrofluid kind of do its thing, show the marks and uh just kind of visually see what's going on. All right, so don't forget that this magnet was unpolarized. It's just a blank neodymium disc with a, a coating on it. So, what you're seeing is the individual little poles that I that I placed onto this magnet. Uh, along with some extra random things going on there, that's a little bit of a residual magnetism left over from where the wires were ran and such inside that device. Alright, so in case you're wondering, this is what the standard CMR magnetics um, magnet looks like under ferrofluid. Now the ferrofluid is tending to go towards the edges of the magnet. It doesn't want to go to the center of the poles. Where mine wanted to go to the center of the poles. Um, so there's a difference there in, in that my disk is not magnetized before I started. I've just got individual pixels, which makes it wants to go to the edge, which happens to be a small dot. That's why you're seeing kind of a reverse here. More to come on this. All right, so this is when I figured out if I took a really big magnet and kind of placed it close while viewing it to the viewing film, you could actually see those individual north and south poles on those individual pixels because they would aid or not aid the actual um, little dot whenever viewing through the viewing film. So you can actually kind of see that here. This is also when I figured out if I wipe the whole magnet with this really strong magnet, I'll erase any other residual stuff that just wasn't permanent. Uh, but the permanent stuff stays. All right, so you can see here that this side has three of the same polarity. Now when I flip the magnet here, you can see the others are four individual um, poles. So you can actually visually see those by moving it closer or further away, the magnet in the back that is. 
Alright, so I used an old print head for that first test. Now I've got another really big dot matrix printer print head that I disassembled and got each individual little coil out of. And this is what I'm actually going to be using for my, my next test here. So eh, just a little fun time lapse of me tearing this sucker down. Alright, so the next test is let's see if we can put a single pixel in a pre-magnetized magnet. Now the only thin slice magnets that I have were little ring magnets. So you can see here I've got set up basically the same situation with a single coil that I just took off that print head and I'm just going to dump the bank into it and probably pop it. Okay. Yep, it appears it went poof, but uh, seems that we've got something interesting here. Let's, uh, let's take a look. But first, a little slow-mo replay. Yep, it went poof. <laughs> well, check it out. Yep. That right there is a single magnetic pixel. Now I'm concerned that this little pixel uh, does not have reverse polarity, but it's like a dead spot, which is a concern. We want it to be a reverse pixel. So let's use the uh, let's use the homemade uh, pole detector and find out. Yes, indeed. Although very hard to uh, get that little homemade detector on that exact spot, you can clearly see it has a very high magnetic field. It's about 75% strength, uh, according to my little meter, which is extremely accurate. So that's not bad for the first try. That is 75% of the strength of the original magnet. All right, so to test uh, and see if there's a pixel there, using just a standard steel ball, um, that's about a 0.26 uh, um, inch diameter round steel ball, and it appears that it will jump around over that, that pixel, that, that spot. So yes, indeed, uh, it appears like we did it. Let's, uh, let's check that with ferrofluid just to make sure. All right, so yes indeed, you see how the ferrofluid goes to the edge of the magnet, and there's a little pixel there where there's no ferrofluid. So uh, let's look at that next to the CMR magnetics and see if we can see a resemble. Granted, I've only got one, and it's a different style magnet, but can you see the similarity? I sure can. All right, well, you can see uh, I'm going to be trying some iron filings. Now, I personally don't like iron filings as much, but between the viewing film, the magnetic uh, um, iron filings, I should say, and between the uh, ferrofluid, between those three, you can get like three different perspectives because each one kind of reacts just a little bit different. Um, so, yeah, this is what it looks like. It's really hard to see, but you can see right here when I drag it across the filings, you can see that little blank spot. Normally that would not appear there, but since there's a reverse polarity pixel, you can see them trying to uh, move out of the way, I guess.
Okay, so here I just use a tiny bit of filings, and you can kind of see it a lot better when you move it around. Still not very clear with the filings, uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, Why didn't you try filings? Well, there you go. Alright, so one more interesting thing about these magnets that I kind of wanted to show was that when you are exactly on this thing, okay, you can see right there, you can see every little pixel in there. But the thing is, is when you're about a quarter inch away, it just looks like a kind of like a ring field or a standard field. Um, it's hard to kind of like uh, kind of blank this thing out. All right, so we have nothing. I get this close. You know, you can see a broad field, but you don't you don't see those pixels. All right, until you get relatively close okay then you start seeing those pixels when you get right on top of them you can see them so that means they're kind of you know they don't their field doesn't expand as far as you'd think they would so one way to check that with my my magnet that I made okay it does the same thing all right so at a distance at a distance you just see a field and you don't see anything until you get close and then when you get close there's that pixel right there kinda hard to see if I move it around you can see it so that's another interesting uh, thing about these little pixels is they the field doesn't ex extend as far as you'd think you see it there so just one more thing to think about I got my new test jig set up by the way. We'll be doing that in the next video. All right, adding more to this video. So, I do have this uh this gauss meter and uh well, I might as well put it to good use. So, I'm going to set this here. We should be able to see that fine. Um I'm going to take a regular um pre-magnetized disc here and just uh see if we can read it. So we're over one, over 200, over 2k, there's 20k. And so we're on the 20k scale and this this probe is hard to use. I'm not exactly sure where the sensor is actually at to be honest. Just put it flat across the side. All right. So we're on the 20k scale. Let's flip it over and see if we get a negative reading. Alright, it's about the same on each side. So let's go ahead and take our little same magnet and um, there's a little black dot right there which indicates my little spot. So let's check it. Let's check this magnet. Alright, so we can get the same reading. Let's flip it over. We can get about the same reading. So we still have our maximum magnetism. We didn't destroy any. Um, so let's see if we can check that spot. Alright, so this thing's very hard to use. So I really don't know where the little point is. It's got to be right there. Right on the end. So that's what that one looks like. Let's let's uh, let's try this guy. Now this one should have both poles. I'm gonna actually use this viewing field so I can see what in the world I'm doing. So let's let's just align these things. This is probably a pretty small field. All right, because what I'm looking for is actually a reverse polarity on each one of these. There was a negative number. Or something fishy. Because this should be north, south, north, south, north. That one should be a south. 
the other one should be another north, or vice versa. Um, now, one thing I was finding interesting is that uh, if you take a regular, if you take a regular magnet, okay, you don't need the gauss here anymore. If you take a regular magnet and you kind of, you know, wipe it around here, you can see that uh, it it basically leaves a standard field. Now, if I took a a small magnet uh, such as this little guy, okay, then I can write on here. Okay, it kind of leaves that path. So again, this is a regular magnet with a single polarity. All right, let's clear all this off. And if I take a pixelated one that I made, all right, okay, I gotta find the pixel. There it is. So let's see if we can do this. Now it is hard to see, but you can actually find that little line, that little trail left behind. See it? See that little trail? That's that little pixel I made. Um, one other little thing I would like to show you is this little magnet will stick to this guy. Okay, so there's the spot right there. I flip this thing over and I can get it to stick to that pixel. Alright, and I can flip it. Watch, I'm just going to push it over. Okay, it went flying off. There it is. Alright, so again, if I push it into that pixel, it wants to it wants to go away. But if I can flip it over, stick it to that pixel, then I can push it off. It will go either flying or somewhere, somewhere else, okay? But yes, indeed, we actually do have it there. Um, I'm gonna check one more time with this with this meter. What I would like to know is what the actual negative value is on that particular pixel. Let's put it on this viewing field because I sure can't find it. And I want to flip it over because this side's a little stronger. There it is. All right, there we go. It's gonna be just right over that sensor. So about that's about 50, just under 50 percent. Earlier, I thought I had it really a lot higher, but could be wrong. So we'll say about 50 percent is strong, but it's hard to measure with this, this device anyway. So there you go. All right, guys, boys and girls. Well, that's it. 2015 is starting to appear itself to be a good year already. At least it is right now, huh? I think it will be. CMR Magnetics Research, Correlated Magnetics Research, I should say. They call these uh, uh, polymagnets. Um, and so I have successfully, okay, on two different scales, and I'll be doing more, of course, trying to replicate such similar type of uh, springy reactions or sticky reactions. Um, oh, I can't get that off. So I have successfully done it, and not only have I done it, but I've done it with homemade equipment. All right, I think anybody with some general knowledge could put together a capacitor bank, charge them, and discharge them. Now I'm not saying you should do that because it's highly, highly dangerous with the kind of power that I'm playing with. But I'm just saying, I did not use the magnetic magnetizer that I do actually have and I will be trying to do this different ways but hey you know what that just goes to prove that you can do something if you really want to figure out how to do it um, so I'll be continuing this path but this is just the first video in the series I'm sure there'll be more and I'll give more details along the way but this is what I got for you peace out my websites rwgresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org is the other location where you can find the collaboration that I'm in alright peace and love see ya
It worked. It actually worked. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs>